بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي خلق السماوات والارض بالحق and he is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the heavens and the earth with truth what does it mean truth here means with a purpose this creation is not a purposeless creation ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار it is a serious creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who cannot do anything without any end without any purpose you can't think about a human being also if he is a normal person that he can do anything without any purpose so how can you imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all in vain no results will come out whether you are doing good or you are doing evil it will be all the same equal no you will have to face the results who yes. alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ardh bil haqq wa yawma yaqulu kun fayakun and the day he says be and it is done qawluhu al haqq his word is the truth what does it mean only his saying is decisive he doesn't need anything any means to accomplish something only his saying kun and it becomes that is the difference you know the days there are some hindu philosophies who say that even matter was eternally present forever because how could god create something without anything god was there forever and better was also better is also qadim parmatma bhi qadim better bhi qadim no quran says he created everything out of nothing and that is called ibda or ijad but then you know he creates things from other things also he created man out of clay he created jinns out of fire so these things are also interchanging one creation to another but he can create and he created in the beginning from nothingness which they call in philosophical terms ex nihilo creation ex nihilo creation without anything which was existing prior priorly no qul hu al haqq only his command that is decisive be and it becomes lahul mulk and for him is the kingdom and sovereignty to him belongs the sovereignty and kingdom yawma yulfaqu fi sur and the day the trumpet will be blown alimul ghaib wa shahada he is the knower of all that is unseen and seen what is visible and what is invisible for you he knows everything nothing is ghaib for him this ghaib is only with respect to us everything is shahada for him is before his eyes everything there is no ghaib for allah subhanahu wa taala but these words are used with respect to and with relation to human beings creation for for us something is shahada something is ghaib something is visible something is invisible but for allah everything is visible wa huwa al hakim al khabir and he is all wise all knowing aware of everything by star ibrahim ul abi azra and just recall when abraham said to his father azar atattakhadu asnaman ala what is it have you taken these idols as gods in the iraq wa qawm ka fi zalali mubi o father i see you and your nation your people they are 
lost in absolute misguidance. You guide them. You pray to them. You prostrate before them. You have yourself carved them out of this stone. And then you stand. You fold your hands before them. You prostrate before them. Ispala Ibrahim ul Yabi Adra Tatahu Asnama Nila Aleha. In the Araka wa Kamaka Fizalali Mobi. Wa Kazali Kanuri Ibrahim Malakuta Samawati Walam. And in the same way, we showed to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam the working of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. You know, there is a divine kingdom. And for this divine kingdom, universal kingdom, there is a bureaucracy also. The civil service of this kingdom is the angels who are enforcing divine commands. Only it is invisible. You have a kingdom here, you have a state and a statecraft and people are there who are looking after different aspects of it, managing it. So in the same way, Malukutu Samavati Wadar, all this universe is being governed and there is the management so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows as I told you to prophets Allah discloses some of the ghaib otherwise they are just equal to other people some of the ghaib you know some of the unseen is shown to them kazalika nuri ibrahim malakut as samawat wal ard we show to ibrahim malakut as samawat wal ard the secrets the secret working of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. So that he becomes from among those who have full conviction. When you have to call other people to Allah, you must have full conviction with you. And because the prophets were sent to call people towards Allah, so they needed the strongest conviction. Without any iota of doubt, that is why we showed to them the secret working and management of this universe. Now, the ayat which are now coming following, is they can be interpreted in two ways. And there's just possibility as we read the text, possibility of both. But you know, the second alternative is more preferable. One is that actually Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam passed through some stages during his intellectual development, he stage one to stage two and then to stage three and then he reached Tawheed. Because you know he was born in a society which was worshipping idols, worshipping the stars, worshipping the king also. All three types of shirk were there. Namrud, he also claimed to be God and people were, had accepted him. Then they used to worship the stars also. Then the idols also, all types of shirk prevalent over there. Now from that he rose up. So maybe that he went through an intellectual process and he rejected these things one by one and one by one and then he reached the top of Tahi. And the second mode of expression, the second mode of exegesis is that actually it was an argument he made to convince others. Otherwise, you know, a Nabi can never be a Mushrik, even his infancy. A Nabi is protected from the very beginning. So this is the second view. And I subscribe to the second view. But the wordings here, they can accommodate the first view also. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ When the night came to him and covered everything, رَا كَوْكَبًا He saw a star. Kala Hada Rabbi. He said, This is my Lord. A very shining star. Maybe it is my Lord. Falamma Afala. But when he said, Kala Lahubul Afilin, he said, No, I can't love those who said. God cannot, cannot set. He is forever. Forever. So I can't accept. Maybe it was a stage in his intellectual you know, evolution. But maybe it's only he used these words as an argument. Look people. Oh, maybe, maybe. As you think, this may be God. But when it said, oh, see, it is God. How can God be God? And when he saw, 
the shining rising moon called Ahad or Abhi. He said, okay, this is a bigger thing. It's very bright. Falamma Afala, but it also said, Kala Lain Lab Yahdani Rabbi La Kunan Namin al Qamid Gali. He said, Oh, had my Lord not directed me and guided me, I would have gone astray. I would have been from, from among these people who have gone astray. That is, he rejected Moor also. Falamma Rasham Tabadagatan. Now when he says, when he saw the sun rising, Kala Hada Rabbi Hada Akbar. He said, oh, oh, yes, this is the biggest, the greatest. Maybe this is our Lord. Then son also said, he said, oh, my nation, I declare my total rejection of all the shirk that you are making. Inni wajjahtu wajhiya lillazi fatara samawati wal narda hadifa. I have turned my face to the one who created all the heavens and the earth. Hanifan, purely, decidedly, in singular determination, I have turned my face towards him. Wamana min al mushrikeen. And I am not going to make any shirk. I am not going to make anything equal or partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will only worship the one who has created. I will worship neither the stars, nor the moon, nor for that purpose, or for that matter, the sun. I will worship the one who created the stars and the moon and the sun. Now his nation, his people disputed with him. They are good with him. Hajjah from Hujjah, Dali, argument. They started arguing, oh, what you are saying? Our forefathers were the fools. They didn't know anything, you think? Hajjahu qawmu qala tuhajjuni fillahi wa qad hadan. He said, are you disputing with me about Allah? And he has guided me. Now I can't go astray. Wala khafu ma tushrikuna bihi. Behind this, you know, the background, they must have said, okay, now, you know, calamities will fall upon you. You have denied our gods, these gods will punish you. He said, I have no fear of these deities whom you are making equal or partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except that my Lord decides something for me. If something unpleasant comes to me, it will be from my Lord. Not from this Lat or Uzza or other, you know, deities or your gods and goddesses. I don't fear them at all. My Lord embraces everything in his knowledge. Nothing is out of his knowledge. So, are you not reminded of these realities? How can I fear those whom you are declared to, to be equal and partners with Allah? And you are not fearing that you have declared associates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most heinous crime. This is the biggest crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are not fearing Allah. Yet you have committed shirk with him. And you want to, you intimidate me. And you want to, that I should fear that there will be coming some punishment from these gods. You are associating with Allah those for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent down any authority. What does it mean? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran or in any revealed book that okay, I have adopted such and such as my son. You bow before him also. We would have bowed. Why not? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked us, commanded us, or okay, I have taken him as a as a very close friend of mine, as we have read, but Allah Ibrahima Khalila, I have taken him as, as as my friend, personal friend. So you worship him also. Had he said so, 
دی وڈ ہیو ڈن ما لم یو نزل بہی سلطانہ ڈو یو ہیو اینی پروف فار دیز گوڈس ان اینی ریویلڈ بک نو ریویلڈ بک ایون دوز بکس وچ کلیم ٹو بی ریویلڈ ویدر دے آر ریویلڈ اور ناٹ یو ول ناٹ فائنڈ اینی شرک ان دم دس شرک ہیز بین کنکوکٹڈ آفٹر ورڈس یو ٹیک ٹو دی گوسپلس نیور ایٹ نو پلیس ان دی گوسپل یو فائنڈ ٹرینیٹی گوسپل اکارڈنگ ٹو سینٹ میتھیو سینٹ جان اکارڈنگ ٹو سینٹ لیوک all the four canonical gospels no way a trinity there you will find something you know in the letters of paul and so all these things can be found over there not in the gospels never even in hindu scriptures basic scriptures if you read upanishads i happen to read you know a translation of upanishads which was published by this government you know united states of america that sometime they were very fearful of communism it is you know i am talking about a time about uh, 45 years um, ago when russia was a very big threat for this western you know society and system now at that time they were publishing the glorious quran they published you know the translation of marmaduke pictal in millions and distribute, distributed it among the muslims throughout the world you read your books please and you 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 please keep away from communism at least in the same way you know gita upanishads very beautifully printed english translations i read them in upanishads you find the finest and purest form of tawhid no sir so actually these are the concoctions of the lower grades and ranks of clergy because they are professionals that becomes a profession with them and that they need some exploitation of the people well this is this is the temple of such and such devta so you have to come here and you have to you bring something you know and presents here and where do this where did that those presents go to them it was there you know wealth they were accumulating wealth you pay and you get a letter you know to Jib- to jibril that he is our friend let him go directly to the to the paradise and you have to pay something for that and these things have been happening in human history wa kayfa khafu ma ashraktum ma ashraktum wala takhafun annakum ashraktum billah ma lam yunazzil bihi sultanan fayul fariqan yahq bil amn in kuntum ta'lamun this is very important ayah of the quran which of these two groups or parties is more entitled to peace one party is muwahhidin who believe in one allah alone no smaller allahs no no aliha no gods and goddesses no devis and devtas the only one and there are others who believe in the supreme god the hindus also believe that at the top is one parmatma is one mahadev is one under this parmatma and mahadev there are so many devis and devtas even in you know greece and rome they had god with capital g he was always one omnipotent omniscient omnipresent but underneath him there was an army of gods and goddesses innumerable gods and goddesses same was the case in arabia at the time of the prophet allah one but underneath there are so many aliha so now there is one party who believes only in one allah having all the authority and a party who believes in allah also and aliha also who will be more entitled to peace what does it mean inner contentment inner tranquility peace of mind can you serve many gods can you serve many masters a person who has to serve only one master will he be at peace or a person who has to serve so many masters fa'ayyul fariqani ahqqu bil amni in kuntum ta'lamun this piece i have a small booklet 
the Quran and the world peace. And this is one of the main, you know, basic ayat on which I have built that thesis. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking this question, Ayyul fariqani haqqahu bil amnin kuntum ta'lamun. If you know, give the reply. Now he himself is replying, Allazina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi zulmin ulaika lahumul am wa hum mautadun. Those who believe, who have the real faith, and they don't mix up their iman with any form of shirk, any form of zulm. Zulm, what is it? Shirk. Because we have in Surah Al-Luqman, inna shirk ala zulmun azim. So, iman with complete tawheed. If you have this, لَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَائِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْ Because when this ayah was revealed, some of the companions of the Prophet came to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُمْ And they said, oh, Messenger of Allah, who among us can be who doesn't do any wrong to anything, wrong to himself? لَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ They have not polluted their iman with any wrongdoing. Who can, you know, fulfill this criterion? The Prophet said, don't you read the ayah in Surah Al-Luqman? Here zulm means shirk. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَإِسْقَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِزُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Maybe you are mistaken. Maybe out of ignorance, you, are, you, are, you have committed something wrong and you have committed it against your own selves. Or you have done something wrong to somebody else, your brother, to your neighbor, to anybody else. But you know this is something else. You will repent, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have polluted your iman with the slightest shirk, then there is going to be no pardoning. We read now those words twice in Surah An-Nisa. Inna la la yaghfiru yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika li man yasha. This is unpardonable. It won't be pardoned. Short of that, these you know discrepancies, these mistakes, these sins, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will pardon to whomsoever He likes. Ulaika lahumul amn, and such people will have the inner tranquility and amn. Peace, inner peace, peace of mind, peace of heart. And only they are the people who are rightly guided. Now comes that ayah. I told you this ayah says that actually this Haza Rabbi and Haza Rabbi and Haza Rabbi, it was only for sake of argument. Not that Ibrahim really believed in it. He was a prophet. And a prophet is innocent. From the very birth, he could not ever have committed shirk. He could not have said to people that he, he could not believe in it. But he said to the people, only an argument. But tilka hujjatuna atainaha Ibrahima ala qawmi. And this was our argument which, gave, which we gave to Ibrahim against his nation. You know, you need some methodology to convince the people. How to approach their minds? You have to talk to them at their own level of consciousness. So he started with it. Okay. You believe in the star? Oh yes, it's shining. It's very high. Maybe. It's just, you know, possible that it is the Lord. But then when it said, oh, we are not going to love those who said. Step by step he took his nation or people to this level. Inni wajjahtu wajhiya lillazhi fatara samawati wa larda hanifa wa ma'ana min al-mushrikin. So it was actually for the sake of argument. Wa tilka hujjatu la atainaha Ibrahim ala qawmihi narfau darajati man nasha. We raise in ranks whomsoever we like. Now Ibrahim, him we raise to a very high rank. Wa attakhadu allaha Ibrahim a khalila. We have already read. Inna rabbaka hakeemun alim. Verily, your Lord, your Rabb, is all-knowing, all-wise. وَمَحَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبِ And we gave him, Ibrahim, a son like Ishaq, and a grandson like Yaqub, Kullan Hadayna. And all of them, we guided them to the right path. وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ And we had 
given the guidance to Nuh before him. Wa min zurriyatihi and from among his progeny, Dawood, wa Sulaiman, wa Ayub, wa Yusuf, wa Musa, wa Harun. Among the progeny of Ibrahim, we raised Dawood and Sulaiman and Ayub and Yusuf and Musa and Harun, alayhi musallatu wa salam, wa kazalika najzil muhsineen. And this is how we give reward to those people who do good, who worship Allah in the best of the ways, in the most earnest ways. As I explained, Ihsan, the highest level, spiritual level, Islam, then Iman, then Ihsan. And this is how we recompense, we give the reward to those Muhsineen. But Zakaria, and not only them, them but Zakaria, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyasa, kullu min salihin among his progeny, the race Zakaria, Yahya, Isa, wa Ilyas, and all were from the righteous people. Wa Ismaila, wa Ilyasa, wa Yunus, wa Luta. And I told you we, when we were reading Surah Nisa, at different intervals in Quran we find, you know, these names of the prophets and messengers of Allah arranged as if flowers in a flower pot. So this is again another flower pot of the names of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many prophets named here? وَبَابْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتِهِ دَابُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَحَارُونَ Nine in one. And if you add Ibrahim, then they become ten. Then Zakariya, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyas. Then Ismaila, wa Yasa, wa Yunusa, wa Luta, wa Kullan Faddalna ala al-Alameen. Now, it's about twelve, eleven, twelve, yes, twelve names of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa min abayhim, wa zurriyatim, wa ikhwanihim. And each prophet had, you know, around him a circle of righteous people. If you are on the right path, you can hope that your progeny, your sons, maybe they are not prophets, but they will be, they will be on the right path. And this has been the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although there is possibility, someone may, may go wrong way. Out of four sons of Hazrat Anu, one was, you know, doomed. And he was drowned before his own eyes, before the eyes of the father. But three were with him on the right path. And it's very, you know, bad today that, you know, many of great ulama and big, you know, religious leaders, we find that out of their sons, none is going the way they used to go. This is a bad, a bad sign. It is just possible if you have four sons, one doesn't take to your path, three should come. We have examples. Hazrat Ahmad Sarhandi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he had four, and all the four were on the same path as the father. In the same way, Shah Waliullah Dehlavi Rahmatullahi Alayhi had four sons, and all the four were on that right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. So in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, around these prophets of Allah, there were their fathers, and their progeny, their sons and daughters, by Khwanihim and their brothers, by Tabaynahum, we all chosen, all of them, we, we like them, Wahadaynahum ila salati mustaqeem, and then we guided them to the, to the straight path. Zalika hudallahi yahdi bihi mayyesha. This is the guidance of Allah. He guides with it whomsoever he likes bin ibadihi among his servants. Wala washraku. Again, a stern warning. Had any one of them committed shirk, all their good deeds would have gone in vain. As I told you, the biggest sum multiplied by zero becomes zero. Shirk is the big zero. You are praying, you are keeping fast, you are performing Hajj, you are doing Umrah every year, you are doing this, you are doing that, but you are doing some for, for, some form of shirk also. All thing multiplied zero comes to zero. Now these are the people. Walau ashraku had they committed shirk. So how important it is to understand what is shirk? What are the different modes of shirk? Different shapes of shirk? Different forms of shirk? 
and I have a lecture on that, you know, a two hours lecture. To have an understanding, we must comprehend. The shift changes forms. Sometimes it is in the form of idol worship. Sometimes it becomes in the form of popular sovereignty. This is the biggest silk of our days. Sovereignty. Materialism. We have all the faith in matter. Not the least in Allah who created the matter. All this faith on matter and material means. This is now the very few among the Hindus also go to temples to worship these idols. Very few of them. Very few of them. You know, this disease of shirk has changed forms. And you must know, you must be able to recognize what form this disease has taken in our time. Very important. Had they committed shirk, all they had been doing good deeds would have come to a zero. Would have vanished and would have gone in vain. They are the people whom we gave the book. Now this is the another word, hukm. We have been finding with book hikmah. Atainahul hikmah. But here hukm. Hukm means authority. Because from among them were the rulers also. Daud was a king. Suleiman was a king. And most of the prophets of Bani Israel, they were actually the chiefs of their community. Kanat Banu Israel, Tasusuhumul Ambiya. Kullama halaka nabiyun khalafahu nabiyun. So they are the people to whom we gave our book and then the authority and one nubuwa and the prophethood. And if these people, who are these? Haulai, O Muhammad, your nation, or those people who, who claim to believe in these prophets, if they are not evaluating these things as they should have done and they are not grateful and they are not accepting these things as they should have accepted so we have assigned for this another nation who will not be unmindful ungrateful for these things what does it mean you know the people who believed in all these prophets they are they were the jews they are now turning away their faces from this guidance. We have selected another nation. This nation is, is in the beginning. It is going to form. That is the Ummah of Muhammad Because this Surah is Makki. Actually, the declaration that now you have become an Ummah, that, that these ayat, they were revealed in Madhavi. Come to Bukhaira Ummati. Now you have, you have qualified that position. But now, up till this time, this Ummah was in the offing, as you call it. It was in offing. So we have, you know, we have designated this thing, this position, to another nation, and they will not be ungrateful. They are the people whom Allah had guided, all these prophets. So you also follow their guidance. Allah salakum alayhi adam. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I am not demanding from you any reward for what I am doing to you. I am conveying the message of Allah to you. I, have I ever de demanded from you any salary? Have I asked you for any contributions? Allah salakum alayhi adam. I don't ask you any any reward for it. In who I love, zikra alilalami, and it is a reminding for the all of the world. I am a reminder. Anta muzakkir, fadakkir in nama anta muzakkir. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir. Go on reminding them. You are a reminder. Wama qadarullah haqqa qadri. And they do not value value Allah. As they ought to have valued him. 
ماں قدر اللہ حق کا قدر یو نو اور ایٹیچیوڈ اینڈ بیہیویئر ڈپینڈز اپان دی ویلیوز وچ وی اسائن ٹو ڈفرینٹ تھنگس ہاؤ امپورٹنٹ اٹ از ٹو ہیو اے بگر ہاؤس آل دو اٹ مائٹ بی آن مارگیج بٹ اٹ از امپورٹنٹ ٹو ہیو اے بیٹر ہاؤس بگ ہاؤس ہاؤ امپورٹنٹ اٹ از ٹو ہیو اے بگر کار دس از سم تھنگ ویلیو اینڈ وی آر پرسوئنگ تو ایوری تھنگ یو نو ویلیو اسٹرکچر دیٹ انڈر لائز اور بیہیویئر وٹ ویلیوز یو ہیو اسائن ٹو ڈفرینٹ تھنگس ناؤ اف اللہ سبان و تعالی اسٹینڈس ہائیسٹ ان یور پرائرٹیز ہز پلیئر از دی موسٹ ویلیوبل تھنگ فار دیٹ آئی ایم ریڈی ٹو سیکریفائس ایوری تھنگ دین یو آر اے ٹرو مومن ان اللہ اشترا مل المومنین الفسم و مالا ہو بین اللہ ہو الجنہ سو ایکچولی دیز ورڈز اپیر ان قرآن مینی ٹائم ما قدر اللہ حق کا قدر اینڈ دی بیسک ریزن آف شرک از دیٹ مین فیلز ٹو ایویلویٹ اللہ ایز ہی شوڈ ہیو اینڈ ایز ہی آٹ ٹو ہیو ایویلویٹڈ ہیم ما قدر اللہ حق کا قدر ہی اس قالو مان اللہ علا بشر من شئی Now, one example of this is when they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sent down on any human being anything. You claim that Quran is being sent down to you from Allah. No, Allah has never sent down anything. And this actually was on the instigation of the Jews. Because till such time, you know, the news of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had reached all the corners of the Arabian Peninsula. Now, the Jews at Medina They were perturbed. They were hoping that the last prophet will come from among them. Because for 2,000 long years, it was their, you know, their proprietorship. So to, so to say, that all the prophets were coming, you know, in Bari Israel. Books were given to them. Torah, Zabur, Injil. So they were hoping that the last prophet also will be raised from among them. So they were perturbed. And they listen, you know, the news were coming. There is a person in, in, in Mecca who claims to be prophet. So actually, so they, were, they were trying to preempt, you know. And in that, you know, they were trying to misguide the people of Mecca. No, no, no. Allah has not, never sent, you know. Because maybe there are some people of Mecca, they might have approached some of the learned people from among the Jews. What, what's your opinion? We have a man. who says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down to him his book. Oh, no, 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 nothing of this sort. Is qalu maan zala allahu ala basharim min shayi. Allah has never sent down anything on any human being. Qul man anzala al-kitab al-lazhi jaabi Musa. You know, in the same coin, reply in the same coin. Qul man anzala al-kitab al-lazhi jaabi Musa. Who sent down the book? which Musa brought. You claim that a book was brought by Musa a.s. Who sent it down? If Allah has not sent down anything on any human being, who sent down the book which Musa brought? Nuram wa hudal dindas. It was a light and a guidance for humanity. Taj'alunahu karatisa. You have put it in different ways. on different sheets, different parchments, not one book like this, in parts separately, so that whenever there is need, you show one part, and you can hide the other part, because in Quran also you have it, that there is one ayah, la taqrabu salata, vantum sukara, if you don't read vantum sukara, la taqrabu salata, don't go near prayer, okay, I am not praying, So in the same way, there can be so many things. If you hide one thing, and you, you show only part of it. You take it out for, for the people, show it to the people, and also you are hiding much of it. You have turned it into parchments and separate sheets, and you hide much thereof. Some of it you show out. وَعُلِّمْتُ مَا لَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنْتُ وَلَا عَبَاوْكُمْ And they were, you were taught what your forefathers knew. Torah came to you. 
and because before Torah, several hundred years passed when they had no book. They were Bani Israel. They were the progeny of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. They were twelve tribes from the twelve sons of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, but they had no book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first book that Allah sent down was Torah. Oh Allah, say to them, Allah sent that Torah. But it implies the same Allah has sent Quran to me. So Mazarhum fi khodin yalabun. Then you just leave them alone, plunging into the vain discourses of theirs. Now don't enter into further argument. Leave them. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ مُصَدِّقُ مُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَلِتُنْزِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا And now this is the book that we have sent down. وَهَذَا مُبَارَكٌ After Torah, this is the book. Actually the book, Al-Kitab, is only Torah and Quran. Because in Zabur, there is no law. It's only Psalms. Hamd, songs of, hymns of Hamd, Psalms. In Injil, it is only Hikmah, no law. Because Hazrat Masih said, this law of Moses will remain applicable to you also. Don't think I have come to destroy law. So the law was law of Moses and after that, law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Shara'i, there are two only. After that book of law, now this book has been sent down. Mubarakun. What is Mubarak? Baraka means, you know, to bring out something which is inherent, some good, inherent in something, but it needs some stimulation. Maam Mubaraka, rain, it comes down on the earth. All the things in, are there in the earth. The seeds are lying there. All the vegetation potentiality is in the earth, not in the water. Water only initiates the process. So it brings out the treasures that are already hidden in the earth. In the same way, there is a treasure hidden in us. That is our soul, our spirit. So now, but this is lying dormant. Quran comes and activates it. Brings it out. So Quran has a kitabu mubarakun. Just as ma'am mubaraka. The water of rain falling on the land, on the earth. Bringing out its prayers, its vegetation. In the same way this Quran, it, it permeates into your souls. Activates it. And brings out the good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already put in it. Potential. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ مُبَانْذَ اللَّهُ مُبَارَكٌ مُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَنَا يَدَيْهِ and this confirms that which was present before it. It confirms. As we have read in Suratul Maida. Inna anzalna Torah. Fiha hudam vanur. Again in Jeel. Fiha hudam vanur. So Allah so doesn't say that Torah is not, was not given to Moses or, or the Bani Israel for that matter. In Jeel was nothing. Never given to, to, to Jesus alayhi salatu was salam. No. These were the books Allah sent down. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْ اللَّهُ مُبَارَكٌ مُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَلِتُنْذِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا Very important. Umm al-Qura, the mother of the towns. Qariya is a town, a township. And Qura is the plural. Umm al-Qura, the mother. Now what is, what does it mean? In every country there is some central city controlling the whole of the country. That becomes the Ummul Qura for that particular land, for that particular country. The Ummul Qura in Arabia was Mecca. It was dominant, controlling the religious activity, the, the, so to say the political activity, the economic activity was all being controlled by Mecca. So Ummul Qura. But now this Ummul Qura has Man Hawlaha and whosoever surrounds it. Now this you know, it can go to surround, immediate surroundings, a few hundred miles around the, the city of Mecca. If you go, a circle is more wider, a thousand miles long circle, then you know, maybe the whole of the world can be included, ma hawlaha, whole of the earth can be included in it. But to begin with, the Prophet ﷺ was only warning and conveying the message 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people of Makkah. Then you know the surrounding people, the tribes which were living in the vicinity of Makkah. And then it was, you know, extending and progressing forward and forward. So these words can include everything. Because, you know, any point on the earth can be said to be the center of the earth. Because it's something round. Any place is center of the earth. So actually, this is a very good explanation. So that you warn the people who are dwelling in that mother of the towns in the Arabian Peninsula, also people who are dwelling around it. Now this is very important. Quran tells that the most important Iman is the Iman Bil Akhirah. Whosoever has some idea of resurrection that I will have to return to my Lord. He will listen to you attentively. He will have some initial taqwa in his, in his heart and mind and soul. And then if you know the dawah of the Prophet comes before him, he will accept it. So the words are, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Those who have some idea of akhirah will believe in this book, Quran. Although, you know, they didn't know the prophethood, all the people of Bakka. Because this institution was known to the Bani Israel, to the Jews. They knew they were the people of the book. They believed in so many prophets. But in the second, you know, the, the line of progeny of Ibrahim والسلام, from Ismail, after Ismail, there was no prophet till Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A very big gap. So they were now not familiar with what a prophet is and what is the messengerhood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they had any idea of akhira, then they will listen to it and they will believe in it. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَهُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ And they protect and they keep a watch over their salah. You know, this salah also continued among the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. They were circle, uh, ambulating around the Kaaba. They were doing tawaf. They were doing hajj. Although they had added something wrong to these things. And they had changed the conditions. Bid'at, innovation. Now it's in this ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected this ummah. And he has been sending mujaddideen who renewed the original deen, all the original forms. And you know, all these bid'at, innovations, they were cleared off. After every hundred years, in every century, people have been coming. Otherwise, you know, the innovations and the, the bid'at, they might have reached to a, such a level that the real, the, educa the real deen would have gone absolutely out of sight. And the same had happened there. We come to know that some uh, African countries, they celebrate, you know, the day of the birth of the Prophet, with music in the mosques. They are having music and they are celebrating the birth of the Prophet, the birthday of the Prophet. But actually, because this is the last Ummah, the Prophet said, I am the last messenger and you are the last community. Last Ummah. So it had to be preserved. Otherwise, you know, things would have taken, you know, a very different form and shape. And that happened to the people of Ibrahim. These were the progeny of Ibrahim living at Makkah and around it. But you, they believed in Ibrahim and they said, they, they were very proud of him that we are, we are the progeny of Ibrahim. But they had changed, you know, the deen of Ibrahim absolutely. But still, you know, some of the relics were there. So whosoever is mindful of Allah, that Allah is there, Whosoever has any idea of resurrection, of akhirah, he will definitely believe in Quran. So this is the meaning of the ayah. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ مُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَلِتُنزِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَهُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِتُونَ And it can also mean that whosoever believes in this Quran, he will be very much watchful about his prayers. He will keep his prayers established. وَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِمَّنِ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ قَذِبًا And who is more evil doer than that? 
who concocts a false thing and attributes it to Allah. Kazaba Allah. You have concocted something, you have framed some false idea, and then you attribute it to Allah. That Allah has said so. So this is the biggest crime. Or you are not the prophet, revelation has not come to you, and you say that prophet, the revelation is coming to me. Both meanings are included. Woman has never been manifested on Allah like that even. Or Kala Uhiya Ilayya Walam Yuha Ilayhi Shayin. Or he claims that revelation has come to him, although no revelation was sent to him. Woman Kala Sa Unzulum Islamaan Zul Allah. And then there were other arrogant type of people in Arab in in Mecca who said, Oh, what is it, Quran? I can also compose, you know, some composition like Quran. But when the challenge was thrown to them. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدُنَا فَاتْمُ بِسُورَةٍ مِّمْ مِسْلِهِ Nobody could dare. But they could say, oh, nothing. We can also compose, we can also send down the same as Quran according to Muhammad is being sent down to him. سَأُنْزُلُمْ مِسْلَمَا عَنْزُلَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ تَرَا عِزِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوَاتِ when they will be dying, they are arrogant, they are haughty, they are proud. They are, you know, pronouncing and saying these blasphemies with, without any fear of Allah. But the time will come. When they will be having and experiencing the agonies and pangs of death. And the angels will be extending their hands, arms. Akhreju al fuzakum. Give up your souls. Give out your life. Al yawma tujzawn azab al huni bima kum tum takulun ala Allah ghair al haq. This day you will be recompensed with a punishment which is humiliating. Azab al huni bima kum tum takulun ala Allah ghair al haq. Because of what you had been saying and attributing to Allah, but was false. Wa kuntum an ayatihi tasakbirun, and you had been the arrogant, and you were showing arrogance against His revelations. Wa lakad jee tumuna furada, and then on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say, Wa lakad jee tumuna furada, you have come to us today alone. Where are your servants? Where are your slaves? Where's all your money and your palaces? You left everything back. Come alone. Balakajay to Muna Furada. The big mansion, the big villa that you built. You left it. Kama Khalakna Kuma Wala Marra. As we had created you. For the first time. You know, here we have relations. He is my brother. He is my helper. This is my nation. But you know, when Allah created us in souls only, there was no relationship. No father, no son. The souls of all human beings present at one time. The soul of Adam. And the soul of the last man who will be born in this world. Till the doomsday. There was no relationship. All these relationships, you know, they have taken place in this world of matter, here. Here, we are attached to different peoples. At that time, we were not. And in the Akhra also, we will be alone. Nobody will be able to help us. You have come to us alone. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَلَا مَرَّا وَتَرَقْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَا ظُهُورِكُمْ And you have learned all... Behind you, whatever we bestowed upon you. Manara maakum shufaakum ulladheen azamtum annahum fikum shuraka. And how come we are not seeing along with you your associate gods whom you had thought that they are the partners of Allah in your matters. They will also have some say. They will be able to save us. How come? They are not visible. Where are they? They are not. They have not come with you. Anybody who has to intercede must come with the, you know, with the person. Anybody who wants to some, make some recommendation, with he has to accompany him. 
ومن اراماكم شفاعكم الذين زعمتم انكم انهم فيكم شركاء قد تقطع بينكم all relationships among you have been broken وضل عنكم ما كنتم تطمعون and all that you had fabricated that has vanished that has gone in vain gone with the wind ان الله خالق الحب والنوا verily it is allah who splits the grain and the dead stone and you just sow a seed a grain then it splits into two a leaf comes out of it or two who is doing it it is happening by your own its own no allah is doing it in allah faliqul habb wal nawa yukhriju al hayya min al mayyit wa mukhriju al mayyit min al hayy he brings out the living from the dead this dead stone is dead is there any sign of life in it from that is appearing you know those leaves and now they are taking the form of a dead palm so living matter had come out from the dead in the same way he can bring out the dead he will bring out the dead from the living zalikumullah such is allah this is the attribute of allah فَأَنَّكُمْ فَكُونَ So whence are you being deviated? Can't you reach here? You must reach the logical conclusion. فَعَلَكُمْ لِسْمَاهُ And he is the cleaver of the dawns. You know the sheet of darkness broken. And you know the rays coming out. The dawn. The white thread of dawn. Who is doing it? فَعَلَقُ الْإِسْبَاعَ وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَلًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ حُسْبَانًا He has made the night for you for resting. And he has made the sun and the moon for your calculation. You are calculating time, the serial time. In philosophy they say there are two types of time. The absolute time, الدار. إِنَّ الدَّارَ هُوَ اللَّهِ There is a hadith, لَا تَصُبُّ الدَّارِ Never abuse dhar. Because what you attribute to dhar is actually the decision and command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhar. And asr. Asr is the serial time. Passing time. So now this passing time we have to measure. So this sun, how much sun? This tells us that half of the day has passed. Because the sun is right on our top. It has gone here, so three-fourth of the day has passed. And you know, the, 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 the moon, it tells you how many days of the month have passed. So actually these are the, their calculation, measures for the time. وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ حُسْبَانَ ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ And this is the ordaining of, of Allah, of the, of the person you may call Al-Aziz Al-Alim. Who is Al Aziz, all powerful, having all authority, and who has all the knowledge? He has ordained all these things in this form. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim wa nafani wa yaqum bil ayat wa tikil hakim.